Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using for loops in Java. Now, a for loop is a special type of loop in Java that we can use to loop through different blocks of code. But what's cool about a for loop is it allows us to use something called an indexing variable. And an indexing variable is basically just a variable that keeps track of how many times we've gone through the loop. So down here in my Java code, I actually have a while loop here. And I wanted to show you guys a while loop and then we can transition into a for loop. So this while loop is basically going to keep looping as long as this variable i is less than or equal to 10. So I have this, vari this variable i over here, it's an integer, we set it equal to 1, and as long as that variable i is less than or equal to 10, we're going to keep looping through. And every time we go through this loop, we're going to print out i, and then we're going to increment i. So I want to show you guys what's going to happen. So I'm going to run this program, and you'll see over here, when we run the program, we get a series of numbers printed out on the screen. So it's just printing out 1 through 10. And what you'll notice is the number that's getting printed out corresponds with the iteration number in the loop. So the first time I went through this loop, I printed out 1. The second time I went through this loop, I printed out 2. The third time I went through, I printed out 3, etc. All the way down to this 10. So the 10th time I went through the loop, I printed out 10. Now this is what we would call an indexing variable, right? So i over here is acting as an indexing variable. In other words, on every iteration through this while loop, i will tell us what iteration we're currently on. That's what it's doing. And this is a very common situation when we're building loops in Java. A lot of times we're gonna wanna know what loop we're on when we're looping through a block of code. So I'm gonna wanna know like, oh, I'm on the second loop or the third iteration or the fourth iteration. And this indexing variable i will tell us that. Now, this is actually such a common situation in Java that the people who made Java created a special loop just for this situation. So you'll notice over here, when I want to use this indexing variable, I have to kind of go out of my way to do a lot of things. So up here, I have to like create this variable. And then down here inside the while loop, I have to like increment it every time. This is kind of like a pain. And this is such a common situation that developers eventually just got tired of having to do this. So they created the for loop. And I'm going to show you how we can use a for loop in order to make this looping structure where we're using the indexing variable a lot easier to deal with. So down below this while loop, we'll actually create our for loop. So I'm just going to say for and then an open and closed parentheses and an open and closed curly bracket. So this is like the outline, the basic structure for our for loop. Now, inside of these parentheses, I'm actually going to store a few things. So up here in the while loop, all we did was put a condition, right? We just put this while condition i is less than or equal to 10. Inside this for loop parentheses, we're actually going to give it three pieces of information. The first piece of information we want to give this is we want to define an indexing variable. So when we use the while loop, we defined our indexing variable up here. We said int i is equal to 1. Inside of a for loop, I can take this same line of code and put it down here in this parentheses. So that's the first thing that we want to do. The second thing that we want to put inside of here is a condition. So you'll notice up here in our while loop, we have our condition. And so we can put this same condition inside of our for loop. So you'll see here that I have my int i is equal to 1, then I have a semicolon, and now I'm giving my condition, which is i is less than 10. We can also add one more thing, which is going to be a line of code that's going to run after every iteration of the loop. Up here in this while loop, you'll notice that after every iteration, we're incrementing i, so we're adding 1 onto i. So I can just take this, and I can put this down here in our for loop. And so now we actually have the same exact structure as we did up here, but you can see we're using a for loop instead. So we're defining our indexing variable, just like we did up here in the while loop. We're defining our condition, just like we did up here in the while loop. And finally, we're incrementing i. And actually, you can get rid of this semicolon. So 
you only really want two semicolons, one after we make the variable and another after the condition. So this is now a valid for loop, and this is actually gonna allow us to do exactly what we did up here in the while loop. So I'm just gonna copy this system.out.println, I'll paste it down here into our for loop, and now I can get rid of the while loop, and we'll just execute this for loop. So I'm gonna click the play button, and we'll run our program, and you'll see that we get the same exact output as we did with that while loop. So this for loop is doing exactly what that while loop was doing. It's just a lot easier for us to write and for us to manage. So one more time, I just wanna walk you through these things up here. Up here, this int i is equal to one, we're actually creating an indexing variable. So this is a variable that's going to tell us what iteration of the loop we're currently on. Then we're specifying a looping condition. So we're basically saying we're gonna keep going through this loop in while i is less than or equal to 10. Finally, this is a line of code that's gonna get executed after we run through this loop, which we're just gonna increment i. And so we get that same exact structure that we got from the while loop. And you can see for loops make it a lot easier. You know, This is such a common situation where we want an indexing variable that the for loop you know, really just streamlines the entire process. So I wanna give you guys a quick example of how we could use this for loop to print out the contents of an array. So let's say that I had an array of names and I wanted to print out each individual name inside of that array. So over here, let's create an array. So I'm just gonna make an array of strings. I'm just gonna say string, open and close square brackets, and we'll just call this friends and this will just be like a list of friends. So I'm just gonna give this some values. We'll just say like Jim, Angela, and Oscar. So we have three names inside of this friends array, and we can actually use this for loop in order to loop through this friends array. In other words, we can use the for loop to loop through all of the entries in this array and print them out onto the screen. So I just wanna remind you guys really quick how we can access an entry in the array. If I said friends zero, this is actually gonna give me this first element in the array. If I said friends one, this will give me the second element. And if I said friends two, this will give me the third element. So this is technically at index position zero, this is at index position one, and this is at index position two. So if I wanted to loop through all the friends inside of this friends array, and maybe we could like say hi to each one of them, I can just modify my for loop a little bit. So I wanna change this i, and instead of setting it equal to one, I wanna set it equal to zero. And I wanna set it equal to zero because array indexes start at zero. So eventually I'm gonna use this i variable in order to access each of the elements inside of the array. So I wanna start it off at zero, because the index of the array starts off at zero. Then instead of saying i is less than or equal to 10, all I wanna do is say i is less than friends.length. So I'm basically gonna say i is less than friends.length and this is gonna give us the length of the array. And we can actually just leave this guy in here, i++. Now, instead of just printing out i, I wanna print out friends square brackets i. So in other words, I'm printing out the friend at a specific index inside of this variable. So because we started in i off at zero, the first time we go through this for loop, we're gonna be printing out friends zero, right? The second time we go through the for loop, we're gonna be printing out friends one. And the third time we go through the for loop, we're gonna be printing out friends two. So that's why we did this. So let's go ahead and run this code and we're gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna click the play button and you'll see that out here we have printed the contents of the array. And so this for loop is really useful because we can just print out any array, right? I could even add more entries into here. So let's add another one, Dwight. And now when I run this again, it's still gonna be able to print out every entry inside of the array. So that's sort of the basics of using a for loop. And a really common use for for loops is printing out arrays. You're gonna see this example all over the place. Like this is a really useful um, thing we can do with these for loops. And it's perfect because we have this indexing variable and it can always tell us how many times we've gone through the loop.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.